So I have started the recording. So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is a webinar uh, series of the Graduate School of Education at Nazarbayev University. And here we are today. My name is Aidana. I am a school manager, also admissions manager to promote academic programs at the Graduate School of Education, master's and PhD programs. And also we have today's speaker, uh, Dr. Daniel Torano. He is associate professor at the Graduate School of Education. And today we will have a webinar on the topic 10 free online tools to help you succeed in your graduate studies. Even if you are not still in the graduate studies, hopefully you will join us this year. So Daniel, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Aidana. I guess I will start by sharing my screen. Um, so I have a few slides, uh, hopefully not too many. Um, can you see them now, sharing my screen? Yes, we can see it. All right. So, well, welcome everybody and thank you for coming uh, today. As uh, Aidana mentioned, uh, today we are going to deliver a webinar on a few online tools that are free of charge, uh, most of them. And uh, we have used this uh, in our uh, programs and our students, they have used them in different ways. And uh, I'm just uh, happy to be here. And uh, just wanna say that these tools, well, this is going to be a very informal webinar um, I'm going to demonstrate, apart from describing them and uh, introducing them, I'm just going to really quickly uh, present uh, or demonstrate them. And you will see that I have a lot of uh, uh, windows here, open tabs, uh, just a quick uh, demonstration of how they work and how you can use them as a graduate student. Um, they have been useful in uh, for many years, uh, at least for me and for my students, but they have become even more relevant these days. Uh, we are living in a pandemic. Uh, most of the education has moved to a remote uh, mode. So online tools are even more important these days for our education. When I prepared this uh, webinar, I had in mind two audiences. One is our current students. Uh, I imagine a few of them will be joining. I'm happy to see uh, them uh, here, but also to any applicant that is considering applying to our programs. Uh, hopefully you will also benefit from this uh, presentation. Uh, but even if you are not in any of these groups, uh, hopefully if you are a researcher or you are in a higher education, then hopefully you will get uh, some good information about the, these tools and perhaps uh, you can uh, try one or two of them if you think they fit your, your purposes. Uh, I have two challenges in this presentation. Uh, one is that uh, it's based on technology as in we are presenting here in Zoom, but I'm going to show you this uh, uh, tools um, live, and I will just uh, go one after another. Uh, so it's possible that uh, they don't respond, these uh, online tools don't respond as uh, we like to. Uh, so if that happens, I apologize in advance. The second challenge is in terms of time. Uh, these are 10 tools, actually 10 plus, because for every tool I provide a few alternatives that you can also consider. There is a final slide with some additional tools that I will not describe, but I will just mention the names so you can explore them by yourself. So I will need to rush and I will not have a lot of time to present each of them uh, extensively. So if you are interested, I recommend you explore them uh, by yourself. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer in the last slide, you will see my email. So you can just yes, shoot me an email and ask me any question if you have any trouble using these technologies. So I will not uh, use my uh, full screen. I will just scroll down, it is a PDF uh, because the I will be moving, as I said, from uh, the presentation to the tools themselves. So I don't wanna go uh, just uh, in and out of this uh, full view. But uh, these are 10 tools I will uh, describe in a bit of detail uh, and I group them in three groups. Uh, there are a couple of tools that will help you uh, in terms of writing enhancement. Uh, I guess most of the participants in this webinar are non-native uh, English speaker speakers as myself. So sometimes uh, we need a little bit of help when we uh, write our assignments and research papers. And there are a couple of tools that will help you to present a better uh, text uh, in English, mostly. Then there are another couple of tools of presenting your ideas. Uh, in our programs, uh, as our students know, we have, uh, uh, to some extent, uh, quizzes and tests and exams. But most of the assignments we have are students writing, uh, submitting, and uh, presenting their ideas. So I will present a couple of tools that might be helpful uh, in that regard. 
And then finally, uh, I think six of the tools I'm going to present, they have to do with uh, research. Uh, as you know, uh, our programs are very research oriented. Our students, they graduate, whether it's a master's uh, student or a PhD student, only when they submit their final thesis or dissertation. And there are many courses throughout the program that actually address the, uh, the research. So you have research methods courses, uh, thesis seminar courses, and almost every course that we teach has a research component in the sense that you will be reading papers and uh, maybe doing lead reviews and so on. So hopefully these tools will be useful for you as well. <clears throat> uh, I will start uh, with uh, the first tool uh, in just one second, but I just wanna tell you uh, for every tool I present, it will be one slide and then I will move to the tool just to show you how it looks like and some of the key features. But you will also see apart from the description in the slide, you will see that there might be three, uh, one of these three um, symbols. So if you see this symbol here, uh, it means that this tool allows you for remote collaboration, which is very useful if you are doing an assignment with your, um, with your group mates. So you can use the tool simultaneously and collaborate remotely, especially useful, as I said, uh, during COVID times. Then if you see this uh, uh, cell phone uh, symbol, means that the tool is also available on your phone or tablet. Uh, I would recommend you use it for most of them. Uh, a PC or a laptop, but if you need to do something minor or just to see uh, the product, how it looks like, then you can use the phone or tablet if you see this thing. And then all the tools I'm going to present are free of charge, um, or at least they offer a free uh, account. Uh, you can just sign in for free uh, and use the tool uh, extensively. But some of them, they have an option to upgrade and to, um, uh, to get a premium account if you pay a fee. So if you see this symbol means that the tool is available for free, but there is also a premium account that you can get um, if you pay a fee. So, all right, there are 10 tools and I am going to show you the first one. And I know you know some of these tools. So the goal for me is to introduce and to tell you how they are useful, but also maybe to uh, discover for you uh, a new feature of that tool that you didn't know in advance. So the first one and probably the second one are known by all of you uh, surely. So the first one is Google Docs. Uh, you know that Google Docs is one of the, is a word processor um, that uh, comes as uh, part of the Google Drive universe, which includes also Google Slides, Google uh, Sheets and many other tools. And it's for me and I've seen my students using it extensively over the years and it's a good alternative for Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word, as you know, is a, actually a paid software. It's a commercial software. So not everybody has access to uh, Microsoft uh, Word and the other versions, uh, Excel and PowerPoint. Um, it has the same tools as a word processor, uh, at least the basic tools that everybody needs when writing an assignment. Uh, but it also adds a few other uh, features that are very, very useful in this context. The first one is collaboration. You can collaborate with other uh, students uh, or collaborators uh, if you are doing a research co-authors. It incorporates Google Translator uh, into the Google Doc. So you can translate, you can upload and translate large documents uh, very easily using the feature of Google Translator. And then there are a few other things like uh, there are plenty of templates available uh, online, both within the Google Docs, but also in websites that you can download by free. And it incorporates some of the, some other tools that might be useful. For example, one of the last uh, that was added was citations that is very useful when you write a research paper. So you know how it looks like Google Docs, uh, looks like this is a document uh, that I wrote, it's a paper that actually was published already. And that's the way it looks like. You have a lot of features here, again, all the tools, uh, um, you can just uh, change the font size, the font type, uh, there are different tools, translation. I mentioned citation is one of the new tools uh, that you can use. Uh, not very useful in my opinion. I will give you another tool today uh, that is more useful for citations. The one that they added in Google Doc at the moment is not very useful in my opinion, uh, but uh, excellent. And the best thing of Google Docs in my opinion, apart from being a great and excellent uh, word processor, is this thing that you have here, it is ads, uh, add-ons. Uh, you can add to Google Documents a lot of tools. The one I have here installed for you is uh, Creatively, uh, uh, Creatively, that allows you to do diagrams, beautiful diagrams that you can incorporate right away in your uh, Google Doc without the need of going outside and then copy paste and you can incorporate that uh, very, very easily. But uh, just wanted to tell you about Google Docs, uh, uh, 
sharing tools, uh, and there are other add-ons, and I will talk about paper pile as the best add-on I've found so far for research purposes a bit later in the presentation, but yet as an alternative tool to Google Documents. And as I said, you know very well about Google Docs, but I encourage you to use it. And for me, it has been even a substitute. I don't use uh, Microsoft Word anymore, or at least not as much as I used to do. Uh, you can collaborate remotely, and of course, it has the application for the for the phone. But that's I will not stop in Google Docs because I know you have used it uh, in the past and you know very well. Second tool for writing enhancement is uh, actually Grammarly, and I'm uh, sure and I hope that uh, many of you know about Grammarly. So I will again not uh, talk a lot about Grammarly, uh, but Grammarly is just a they define themselves as a digital writing assistance tool. Uh, which is based on artificial intelligence, and it's actually a great tool. I use it every time. Um, it's uh, the same as uh, Microsoft Word has a grammar checker, but some someone told me one time that Grammarly is like a Microsoft Word grammar checker on asteroids because it's way more advanced than the uh, Microsoft Word um, uh, grammar checker. And apart from that, uh, there are lots of additional things you can do with Grammarly uh, to enhance your paper. So there is also in the premium account, if you have uh, uh, one uh, plagiarism detector and additional uh, suggestions on how to make your paper look much, much better. You can use Grammarly in many different ways. You can just use it as a desktop editor. There is an app you can download. You can see the uh, icon here. You can use it as a browser extension that you have here, and you can incorporate that into uh, Microsoft Office, Google Docs, Gmail, and pretty much everything that you do in your computer, you can have that installed and ready to use. Um, perhaps even more importantly than Grammarly, because I think everybody knows Grammarly, it's something that uh, I've discovered thanks to Aidana, by the way, uh, very recently. There is an alternative to Grammarly. Unfortunately, it's also paid, uh, but if you are a student at the NU, you have access to a free trial version that lasts for a month, ends in December 1st, that is very similar to Grammarly. So I just want to show you how it looks like. Um, I have here a document, another uh, paper. In this one, specifically this one is uh, I'm writing on at the moment. So you can add Grammarly as a, an extension. Uh, I think in Microsoft Word, this is called add ins uh, here. You can add in Grammarly. You look for it and you add it. And you know, this is more or less how it looks like. Uh, something is, uh, so you are writing and automatically Grammarly proposes you uh, ways to improve your uh, writing. And there are lots of suggestions. This is the free account. Uh, I have not logged in into my premium account. So you can actually see how it looks like when it's free. And there are very, very, very useful uh, uh, comments and suggestions. So there are from prepositions uh, and correct language. Uh, and it not only provides you the suggestion on how to improve this, but also tells you why that might be not the best word or the best uh, um, uh, writing uh, in your test text. Uh, for free, when you get the free Grammarly account, you get access to uh, comments and the suggestions for correctness and clarity, but not for engagement and delivery, and not for the plagiarism detector. But as I said, um, the premium account is great, and if you can afford it, it's definitely worth uh, uh, paying this extra little money. It's a bit expensive, I would say, for a graduate student, perhaps. But my suggestion would be that you start using the free account if you find that useful. Uh, normally, what happens is after one or two months of using, Grammarly will send you an email with some discount prices on this application. So you can actually use it. Uh, you can consider uh, normally it's a discount of 30%, 40%, 50%. You can see whether this uh, price uh, it's, uh, is good for you. But as I said, uh, Grammarly is uh, something that you have probably used uh, very frequently. And if not, I strongly recommend you do. But there is this other tool that you can also add as a, an extension of uh, Microsoft Word that is Writeful, uh, this alternative. Again, also paid, but if you have uh, you are an NU student, you can register with your, you could sign up with your uh, NU account and you will have access to it and it looks very similar. But uh, this tool I would say is more, um, um, more useful for researchers. Uh, it has been developed by researchers uh, that do research and uh, want to help other researchers uh, to enhance the writing in, in the papers. So you can do the same thing. You can do a check document. Uh, it will be 
The same as Grammarly, we will give you suggestions on how to improve this document. Uh, you can check a single paragraph. So for example, if I wanna check this paragraph, I just click here and then it will provide some suggestions for me on how to improve some of my writing. Like also then uh, it provides you a few suggestions on other words that researchers use when they write these papers. And uh, as you can see, it looks similar to Grammarly. Uh, it provides more options. Uh, and again, this is based on artificial intelligence meaning that the, what uh, Rightful does is compares your writing to other papers and then suggests you. And then, for example, institutions uh, and then comma, uh, it's 69%, meaning that it's more used in this way than in this way. So it provides you very useful suggestions. But more than that, uh, Rightful offers you things that Grammarly doesn't. And one of them is the sentence palette. Or, and with well, the sentence palette is, again, remember that this is more for researchers. It, gives you some uh, tips or some uh, suggestions on how to write very uh, typical sentences that you will find in a research paper. And it's organized by section. So this is more or less how our research paper will look like. There will be an introduction, a lead review section, a method section, a result sections. And what you do is simply, if you're writing the results and you wanna write something about the uh, interpretation of the findings, then you will have some examples of how uh, others have written this in the past. So it's great to inspire you on how to write uh, effectively and in a professional and academic way. And finally, you can also do the same by looking for your own, um, your own um, examples. I would ask, I will make a little interruption. I will ask Almira, please, if you could uh, mute yourself. Uh, that would be I'm great. I'm so sorry. No problem, no, don't worry. These things happen to everybody, so no worries. But I was saying that uh, the, um, uh, this part, the last part, the language search, the previous one provides you like the typical sentences, but there is something specific that you are writing and you wanna get some help with. You can simply type the beginning of the sentence. For example, if I'm writing something about the findings and I would say something uh, like uh, the findings of this study suggest that, and then you click enter, and then it will provide you some, probably something on the findings of this study suggest, okay? That's the reason. Suggest that. And then you have lots of examples of real papers on how other researchers uh, of papers that are published. So normally these are papers that are well-written already. Uh, they use the same uh, words that you have been using in your paper. So you can just click in any of the examples and then you can see how they have used. And this, of course, can provide you some good inspiration on how to write uh, the text that you are trying to incorporate into your paper. Both are great tools. I would say Grammarly is uh, broader and you can use it in different contexts, uh, very helpful. Uh, Grateful is more for research papers. So if you are a researcher, then I would strongly recommend, especially if you work uh, or study at NU, that you give it a try and you uh, use this uh, trial version that NU offers at the moment. All right, so this is for Grammarly. And now uh, the third tool is something about um, presentations. So. I think in the past for many, many years, uh, all of us have been using mostly Microsoft PowerPoint uh, to present uh, your uh, ideas or to present your assignments. Uh, lately, I've been also trying Google uh, uh, Slides, which is basically the equivalent of uh, PowerPoint, but for Google. Love them both, uh, but uh, to be honest, I always have a bit tired of the same uh, kind of templates and they look already very familiar to me until I discovered a few years ago, Canva. Canva is, uh, they call themselves a graphic design platform to create visually attractive content. And it not only helps you to present your ideas in the way of a presentation, it gives you many, many, many different uh, templates, free templates, beautiful templates uh, to uh, present ideas, not only again as a presentation, but posters, infographics, uh, resumes, uh, flyers, symbols, anything you need to present, surely you will have something in Canva that can help you. There are, again, thousands of free templates, and then you can uh, collaborate with um, other students. This tool is uh, not free, but uh, during the pandemic, at least, uh, Canva offers free access to the business account. 
if you log in, uh, you sign up, sorry, from an educational account. So if you are a student at NU or any other university and you log, uh, excuse me again, sign up with your university uh, account, you will have access to the premium account for free. This presentation, by the way, was done in Canva. And I just want to show you, in case you don't know Canva, even though I anticipate that many of you do, uh, just how big is the, um, the, the availability of uh, resources in this uh, application. You can go from presentation, but again, you can do things like Instagram posts, posters, logos, uh, resumes, CVs, uh, videos, flyers, cards. And just to give you an example, if you go to presentations, just to, there is normally uh, the most frequent way we use to uh, present ideas is will be like PowerPoint uh, slides or slides simply. Uh, there are so many templates. You can just select them by theme. There will be themes like recently used for you based on what you have used in the past, simple presentation, educational presentations, but also you can just search for templates. So for example, if you're going to present something that has to do with, uh, I don't know, reading, like you are doing a research on reading, uh, and then you want to have a slide, a template that looks uh, that somehow reflects the topic of reading in some way. So you have hundreds of presentations for every topic you have in mind. And all you need to do is just to select one that you like, and then you click here, and then you have all these pages. Uh, this one is actually not as spectacular as others that I've seen, uh, but uh, let's try with this one. Uh, beautiful designs, uh, you can change fonts, uh, add pictures. There are also photos, like thousands of free photos that you can use very professional looking photos. You have different elements. You can insert text and music videos. Great tool uh, when you wanna present your ideas. Uh, for now, uh, for the last few months, I've been using Canva mostly uh, for doing presentations. And then you can download these presentations in any format you like. PDF is the uh, default option, but you can download. Okay, I cannot download because it's empty, but you can download in PDF uh, as pictures, as uh, PowerPoint, as Google Slides. Great presentation if you're planning to, uh, great tool if you're planning to present any kind of idea. All right, uh, for now, I think these three tools are probably known by most of you. So hopefully from now, from the fourth tool, uh, a few of you will learn something new that you can uh, use in your uh, studies. The next one is Loom. And we are still in the group of uh, presentation, like presenting your ideas uh, uh, tools. Loom is something I discovered approximately a year ago, and I'm totally in love with the application. Uh, Loom, it's uh, a very simple tool to record or screencast your videos, uh, lectures, uh, messages. Uh, it's free even though there is a premium account, but you can do uh, great things with the free account. And uh, you can share your videos easily uh, with your audience. There are many other tools you can use to do that. Like uh, actually Microsoft PowerPoint has an option. I think it's not as uh, simple and uh, handy as uh, Loom. Uh, there is also Screencast uh, Omatic, but it's, again, it's not free. It uh, has a very limited amount of videos you can record with a free account. So for me, Loom is at the moment the tool I'm using. Uh, all my lectures, uh, we are now doing uh, remote learning, mostly asynchronous learning. So I record my lectures and I record them using Loom. Um, it's a wonderful tool. Uh, by the way, it's again as Canva, it's free if you log in uh, or sign up with your uh, student account, uh, NU account or any student account that you can do. You can collaborate and you can also uh, use that in your phone. You can actually record yourself in the phone if that's more convenient to you. Uh, it's very versatile in, this, in terms of you can download the app uh, to your desktop. You can use it as an extension in Google Chrome. And uh, just to give you uh, just an overview of how this tool looks like. It's very simple. As soon as you clean the icon, then this uh, little window appears. You can start recording immediately. So as, I, as soon as I press this button, then it will start recording. And you can choose whether you can record both your screen and yourself using the camera of the uh, device, if you are in a laptop or in a uh, phone. You can just record the screen only with your voice on top of that and maybe only the camera if you just want to deliver a message with no uh, powerpoint presentation or any demonstration you can just record yourself uh, using the camera 
Um, you can also decide what you want to record. Um, you can record simply uh, the window you are at the moment. You can record uh, the full screen, like uh, everything that is there, only a window, or just customize the size. Yes, a portion of your screen can be recorded as well. Uh, I think I should not press this button, start recording, because if I do, I don't know what is going to happen with Zoom. Uh, maybe it will stop, so I will not press. But when you record, then it will be a countdown, three seconds. I will give you a little time to prepare, and then we'll start recording automatically. When you are done recording, then you just press stop or pause in case you want to uh, pause the video. And then when you stop the recording, automatically the video will be available. And again, I will not demonstrate how to record, but as soon as you are done with your video, then it will bring you automatically to your personal library in Loom. Then what you can see here is these are my videos, the videos I've recorded uh, for the last course. I had four videos here available, so you will be able to see them. I will just click on one of them here so I can see you, uh, show you how it looks like. Uh, because it's not only about the video, there is more. So you can, once the video is recorded, that's the way it looks like. You can share the video. I mean, of course you can watch the video here. If you press play. You can copy the video very easily, and then it will be a link that you can share with uh, anybody in Moodle, in uh, by email, uh, by WhatsApp, anything that you want to share. Then uh, you can also download this file, and then it will be a file. You can select what type of file, the format of the file. Uh, you can uh, edit your video, trim, just cut parts. If uh, there is something that you don't like, you can just cut it, and very easy to use. But another thing that I like about Loom, uh, and students have used in my classes is to record themselves a presentation, is that you can engage with the audience uh, in a similar way you can do in YouTube, for example. You are like basically being a YouTuber when you use this tool. So one of the ways you interact is uh, first, you can see how many people have watched the video. Uh, you cannot do that if you share your video by email. You don't know how many people have opened the video and watched it. Uh, you can also react to the video. So if you are a person watching this video, then you can just react by thumbs up, uh, just uh, surprise that uh, you like it. And for me as an instructor, I find that very useful because I can see when a person uh, reacted and I can see, okay, this person, somehow there was something here that this person liked. Uh, there was here also that someone like or dislike so i can get some feedback from the audience in this asynchronous mode but also you can write comments again as in youtube you can just write comments and then the person i mean actually everybody with access to the video will see the comments in the in the in this website so great tool i've been using very very um uh, extensively and especially in this remote mode learning uh, even more all right not here but here Loom. I'm just looking at the time. Uh, 30 minutes. I think this webinar was designed for one hour. I think we're doing good with time. Now we move to the research element. And I said that I have six tools to show you for research. And again, if you are a student in a graduate program, most likely your program will have some uh, research component. That's definitely true at NU and GSE in particular. And uh, I want to show you this tool, uh, which is really not a tool. It's a software. It's a full software that is called YASP. Um, very recently developed. Uh, this is an alternative, an open source free statistics uh, program that is an alternative to SPSS. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, statistics and quantitative data analysis, SPSS is a tool that is used in, mainly in social sciences to do uh, quantitative data analysis and statistics. I've been teaching at the GSE for seven years and a half. I've used that tool every single year when I teach quantitative research. However, now with the pandemic, there is a problem. That is this tool, SPSS, is great, but it's not free. So students cannot access to it from home. We used to teach this in computer labs in our school, but now we don't have, uh, students don't have access to computer labs. So, by uh, looking for an alternative, I came across uh, JASP and uh, Jamobi, by the way, which is a very similar tool. There is a very interesting relationship between the two, but I will just talk about JASP. Uh, it's actually a tool that was developed by researchers uh, as an alternative to SPSS. And this means that it looks very similar to SPSS. So if you're familiar with that software, then you will not have any problem working with JASP. 
but it's great in many ways. The first one, of course, is that it's free. SPSS is a very expensive software. It's uh, just, it's absolutely free. You can just go to the website and download it to your uh, computer. You have here, you see the icon. Uh, then there are things that are actually better than SPSS. One of the things I like the most is that in SPSS you have two windows. One is for your data and the other one is for the output, the findings. When you do an analysis, then the output comes in a different window. I like that just, just integrates these two into one single window. I love the uh, graphs and tables that uh, just creates. Uh, it does in a automatically, as soon as you add variables to your model, parameters to your model, the tables are created. And the more variables you add, the more the table evolves. But you can also delete variables and the table and the graphs, they readjust based on the par parameters that you have in your model. And then another thing I like, especially educationally, is that in the website, there are tons of free videos and learning resources to learn how to use JASP and to do different uh, analysis. So just a quick look on, on how JASP looks like. Uh, when you download the software, you don't need to register or anything. You just download, and then you will see something like this. And this is the main window. Uh, you can open a file, and another great thing of uh, JASP is that it opens any kind of file, whether it's an Excel, uh, um, uh, CVS, CSV, um, uh, SPSS, uh, the format of uh, JASP, of course, and you can open any kind of file. So just to show you how it looks like, uh, for example, this, uh, okay, I will open this, it's a file I have uh, in my computer. So you have the way it looks like it's very similar to Microsoft Excel or SPSS. There is this window. Uh, this is your data. So there is already data into the software. These are variables. These are cases of participants. And all you need to do is just to analyze. Uh, you don't need to learn coding uh, to use this uh, tool, the same as SPSS. Uh, but it runs in R. And R is a programming language. Uh, so everything that is done here is based on the language of R and very simple to use. There are different uh, modules or packages, and there is one for descriptive statistics, one for t-test, an regression. You see here different, uh, these are the ones I normally use for my analysis and for my teaching, but there are more that you can use. Uh, there is uh, for audit, for Bain, distributions, uh, equivalence, uh, machine learning, made analysis. Uh, so many of these things are not available in SPSS, and that's why I love it so much. It's better because it's free, uh, more tools, and great uh, great interface so you can just uh, you want to run some analysis like descriptive analysis by the way you can do classical analysis and Bayesian analysis which is another thing that uh, i think spss doesn't offer but just to do something simple you have your data you can run some descriptive statistics then you just uh, say okay one of the descriptive statistics for the first 10 items you just move them to the variables you see this looks very similar to uh, spss if you have used it and then the table automatically comes into this window. You don't have to be moving into two windows. You want to see your data again, you come to your data. You want to see your findings and your uh, data analysis, you come here. Uh, very simple. It comes uh, great. Uh, you can copy this directly and paste it into your Word document or uh, Google Docs document. Uh, that's something that is more complicated in SPSS. You can add notes here. Uh, if there is anything that you like to add a note here just to remind yourself something, you can add it here. Again, that's something you cannot do in SPSS. And then, as I said, the plots. The plots are just beautiful and very simple to do. So, for example, you're going to just create a box plots. Then you select, uh, you tick these boxes, and automatically the uh, graphs, they appear. Hopefully, they will appear soon. OK, you have the plots here for every item. There is a plot. You can add more elements. So this is the box plot, but you can have maybe the violin. So there will be the, this uh, beautiful uh, diagrams here. Uh, you can come up with any kind of distribution plots. Anything you like to do, it's, uh, it's here. At least for a graduate student in the social sciences, at least everything you need is here. And I like, uh, another thing I like is that you can, uh, I will probably not demonstrate that, not to waste uh, much time. But there are also, as I said, educational resources here. Uh, you can actually see examples of analysis of every of these analysis. You can there are examples. You can see that there are a database, the findings, and some explanations of what these findings mean. So everything is in one tool. You don't have to go to YouTube to watch videos or another book uh, to learn more about statistics. Everything is here. 
Jamovi as I said, is an alternative that is also free and it looks very similar to JASP. So you can try both and just decide which one you like most. Now, this is uh, the sixth tool. The only one probably I'm not going to demonstrate. Uh, name is Order. Uh, it's also based on uh, artificial intelligence. And this is a voice transcription tool. Uh, in reality, they advertise themselves as a note taking tool. Uh, but I decided to put that into the research group of tools because I use it very often in research. And the way I use it for research is for voice transcription. Those who do qualitative research, they know how time-consuming time is actually to um, transcribe uh, interviews. Normally, when you do qualitative research, one of the typical ways you collect data is through interviews. So you will go uh, meet the person or do that online, and then you will record their interview, and then you or someone else, uh, your research assistant or someone as uh, a company will be transcribing, just listening to what the, uh, the participant says, uh, listening to the uh, interview question and transcribing that into text in order to analyze. Well, with this tool is uh, probably so far the best I encountered just to automatically transcribe voice uh, files into text. It's extremely accurate. As I said, it's uh, running uh, based on artificial intelligence. And it's the best tool I've uh, uh, encountered in order to do the, the um, uh, transcriptions. Uh, it offers a premium account in which uh, there is no limitation about, the, uh, uh, about how much you can uh, transcribe per month. But the free account is pretty decent. It offers 600 free minutes per month, uh, which is normally you're doing a small scale project like a thesis, a master thesis, then that should be more than enough for a month. The challenge is that it's only available in English at the moment. Uh, it recognizes different accents, but only in English. If you are interested in doing that with another language, for example, Russian, I'm not sure about Kazakh, but Russian, then I would recommend you use Google Docs voice typing. It's not as accurate as order, but still that's a pretty good job and probably will save you a lot of time when you are transcribing your interviews. Again, I'm not going to demonstrate. Uh, I would recommend you just try it by yourself. And in particular, this app works very well in the mobile phone. So if you are doing an interview for your study, you can just uh, have your dictaphone on one side and just to put this, uh, uh, to activate this app in your phone, and then it will record in both. And probably you will save a lot of time uh, when it's, uh, it comes to transcription. All right, now this tool, it's the seventh and everybody knows Google Scholar. Hopefully, uh, you know, a very important part of uh, conducting a literature review is to find the sources, the references, the uh, previous studies that have been conducted in your field. And there are different uh, databases you can use in order to do that. There are some that are very good. Uh, I mentioned that as alternatives, Web of Science and Scopus. Uh, these are great. Unfortunately, they are paid. Uh, luckily, you can uh, access those if you are uh, a student at NU, at least, and maybe, maybe other universities as well. But uh, you cannot access, and it's uh, maybe sometimes a bit challenging to access these tools when you are outside of NU. So for me, Google Scholar is a pretty good uh, uh, database. I use it extensively. If I'm going to do a systematic lead review, very uh, very uh, systematic, then probably you will use Web of Science or Scopus. But if you're just doing a quick search uh, and you want to find a few papers uh, that you are interested in reading, Google Scholar is very, very decent uh, engine. Uh, hopefully, again, everybody knows about Google Scholar. But as I said, you may look, uh, might learn a few things uh, about Google Scholar that you didn't know before. So this is the way Google Scholar looks like, very similar to Google uh, search engine. Uh, all you do is just to input here a few keywords. Uh, for example, my research uh, addresses uh, a topic called gifter underachievers. All right, so I just write these keywords and then I get all these results. I get a lot of results, which in some way is good. So there are 23,100 papers that they have gifted and their achievers somewhere in the title, in the abstract, in the keywords, uh, which is great, uh, but not as great as I will tell you, and I will tell you why. Good things about Google Scholar, uh, you can find very easily the uh, citation numbers. You know, a citation is, uh, uh, these are the number of papers, uh, articles, research publications that have cited uh, this paper. So the more citations, 
we could imagine the more relevant to the field that publication is. So that's a good indicator that you have it right away. Another great thing is that uh, you need to, if you use, uh, you read this paper and you think there are good ideas there, you can use them in your assignment or your publication, but you need to cite, uh, you need to provide a reference for this uh, uh, publication. So a good thing of Google Scholar is that it provides citations in different formats, like uh, the one we use in our school is APA, uh, that you can just copy paste and ensure that the, it's accurate and follows the format APA. In this case, there are some things missing for this, this uh, reference, but hopefully uh, let's see a, a more, okay, let's see this one. This one is more accurate, right? In APA style, there are the surnames, the year, the title of the paper, the uh, name of the journal in italics. Uh, a problem here is that this should be capital letters. So you will need to always check that it's accurate volume issue and the page number. So this is a pretty decent reference. I can just copy and paste on my paper. Uh, other good things uh, about here. Uh, well, there are a few other good things that you can do. But uh, one thing I would recommend if you are especially a student at Nazarbayev University, uh, a trick you can use is uh, go to settings and then go to library links, library links, and write the name of your university. In my case, I have already selected Nazarbayev, Nazarbayev University Library. If you don't have that, just incorporate it to it, save, and this will allow you to access full texts by using the credentials, uh, the, the access that uni your university library has. Uh, and again, we are pretty lucky uh, at NU, we have uh, good access to these sources, but if you are not in this uh, university, you might want to try uh, what is the access that you have at your university. The last thing I want to say about Google Scholar is, uh, as I said, these are it's good in some way that you have so many references, but obviously you cannot read 23,100 papers just to write an assignment. So a tip that I can give you is uh, to use the advanced search option. And instead of looking for these keywords in the whole article, just look at them in the title. With this little um, change, you will see how this number 23,100 comes down to 152, which is a much better number to start a lead review. Still, these are uh, quite a bit of uh, papers. If you're doing a small assignment, maybe you don't want to read 132 papers, but you can guide yourself by the number of references that you uh, see for each paper and probably start reading the ones with the highest number of references. So just by doing this little trick, you can reduce the number of papers that Google Scholar displays. All right, let's go to the eighth. I'm running out of time. Uh, paper pile, it's a great reference manager tool. Uh, when you write a paper, as I said, you need to cite, provide credit to the original sources where your ideas are coming from. So there are many different reference manager tools. Some of them are great. Mendeley, Zotero, they are actually free. EndNote is not free, but it's also a great reference manager. However, I've tried them all and you need to invest a lot of time to make them worth use. Um, you need to create your own library. Uh, then only after a while, you will be uh, benefiting from that uh, uh, reference managers. Uh, they are very powerful, but again, they, they take forever to, uh, to get profit from. Uh, recently, or maybe a couple of years ago, I came across a paper pile. It's something that uh, you can use in your assignments and your research papers as a very quick and handy research uh, uh, reference manager tool. Uh, it's only working with Google Docs. So I come back to Google Docs and uh, you see you can add this uh, as an add-on. You can just add paper file. I already have it. And then what you do pretty much is just as you write, you incorporate your citations in the paper. So imagine I'm writing this paragraph and I want to incorporate a citation here. So instead of going and uh, looking for that and then identifying what paper is that, including that manually, like, uh, you know, if I'm citing myself, imagine, uh, I would say Hernandez, and then the year. Uh, that's very time consuming. And sometimes you don't know what the paper is and you need to create a reference at the end. So you can use paper pile for this purpose. So imagine I wanna add a reference and I know what the reference is. The reference is, I just go to paper pile. I insert a citation. 
and hopefully this will come out soon. Okay, so you have here, and here is where you look for your citation. Uh, and when you type the citation, imagine again, I know what paper I'm uh, trying to cite. And then as soon as you write the surname of the person, then papers in your library, the library you have created appear. But sometimes you wanna cite a paper that perhaps is not in your library yet, but that's not a problem because you can just use a search online for papers and paper pile is a link to Google Scholar. So we'll perform a search in Google Scholar, uh, which includes these keywords. In this case is my surname. So you do a search and then this goes to Google Scholar and then it will show all the publications that are indexed in Google Scholar by this person. And then all you have to do is just to click and then the reference, the citation is incorporated automatically. So it takes a little bit to load. So I will wait maybe a minute. It's there, you add the citation and it's there. So the citation is there and you can keep doing that as you uh, write your paper and then there is an option in which you create a bibliography and all it does it brings you all the references that you have incorporated in your uh, paper using paper pile it adds that into a reference list at the end of the paper automatically uh, using the information that is available in google scholar but automatically it adds everything to the reference uh, list at the end of your paper for me, it's the most uh, useful reference manager uh, because you can use it uh, inconsistently. You can use it for this paper I wanna use, for this paper I don't wanna use, so just to add a few references, uh, while the other reference managers, EndNote, Zotero, and Mendeley, you need to be very consistent and invest uh, quite a lot of time in order to, uh, to, to benefit from them. All right, now the last two tools, and we are running out of time, so I will maybe just, uh, mention a little bit about them, but the, for me are great. So the next one is Researcher App. Uh, Researcher App is like the Facebook of publications. So it's a social media style feed to keep track of your the newly publications uh, that are available in your preferred journals. So uh, I have it here. So you need to, it's completely free. You sign up uh, and then you come to this screen at some point when you have uh, introduced your uh, credentials and your details. And then what you need to do is simply to select uh, your area of interest. In my case, it's social science and psychology. Then you are a bit more specific in sub area. So let's say I'm in developmental educational psychology, uh, also in education. You click next and you can select more, uh, as many as you want. And then what Researcher App does is that it shows you all the journals that are indexed in the Web of Science uh, uh, database and you follow them. So you follow the journals. Uh, let's say I will follow these three journals just for demonstrative uh, purposes. Uh, you can follow as many as you want. Uh, okay, let's say four, and then you click next. And then when, what this does is, uh, okay, I don't wanna introduce keywords at the moment. It, informs you that there, there is a feed that every time a new article has been published in this journal, it brings you as a Facebook type of uh, social media page, uh, which you can consult. So in the past, I used to get email alerts for every single journal I'm interested. So every certain, every week or every two weeks, I got an email alert from that journal uh, telling me what new publications were uh, uh, published in that journal. Uh, you get a lot of emails, it becomes at some point not that useful. So with this tool, I'm always informed about the latest publications that are published in journals of interest. And then finally, uh, I would recommend before I go to the final, uh, this is uh, great in mobile phones, so you can use it in your computer, but also you can have it as an app in your phone. And I think it's even more powerful in the phone. You can just, just consult from time to time what are the new publications in, the, in your favorite journals in your field. And finally, another tool that for me is probably the biggest discovery in the last year uh, in terms of research and very useful tool if you're conducting a, a literature review. The name of the tool is Connected Papers uh, and it's here. So what Connected Papers does, uh, does is uh, it creates a visual graph uh, of all related publications using 
a first publication as a seed. So it basically conducts a lead review for you. Uh, of course, the graph, the visual uh, diagram, just by introducing a seed publication. So for example, imagine that I found this publication on my search, and I think this publication is very relevant because it's very related to my research questions, very related to my topic. It has a great number of citations, and the authors are well-known. It's like, okay, I will use this as a seed publication. All you do is you paste the title here and you build the graph. And then uh, hopefully it will not take very long. Uh, okay, it identified this is the publication, yes. And then you click here and then it starts building the graph. And the graph looks something like this, it's pretty amazing. So your publication is here. And then when you have around all these other bubbles are publications that have cited this publication or have been cited by this publication. So it's a great, a great way to discover new publications you were not aware of in a very fast and uh, visual way. So all these publications are here. So if you're interested, you can start scrolling, like uh, just uh, not scrolling, but just taking it's like, okay, this publication, yeah, same since interest in this publication. And then you get the abstract. You can build another, a new graph based on another publication in the network. But it's a great way to discover new publications that are related to your original publication in just a few seconds. You can just filter by prior works. This will be the publications that have been, uh, that the, were cited in your seed paper. The derivative works are those who were, uh, that had cited your uh, seed publication and you can just look at them uh, and identify new publications for your lead review. Um, all right, so I think I will stop presenting uh, new um, tools. I just had a few final slide in which I like to provide you additional free online tools. I will not be talking about them, but uh, hopefully this presentation will be shared. So you have, uh, if you're interested in these publications about productivity, time management and wellness, which are very important uh, uh, areas for uh, graduate students and researchers in, gen researchers in general uh, are very useful. And I'd like to finish by just uh, maybe uh, opening the discussion in uh, a bit uh, of an interactive way. So uh, yes, I would like to know from the audience and then maybe we, we can go to the QA session. We can spend a couple of minutes doing this uh, uh, interactive discussion. So I would like to ask uh, you to go to this website, uh, www.menti.com. Then you will be able to introduce this code and then you will be asked to just identify what are the three favorite tools that you have learned in this presentation or any other favorite tool that you have that you would like to share with others that I have not covered in this presentation. If we can do that in a couple of minutes or three minutes, then we will get a very good view of what are the tools that are maybe more uh, preferred by uh, uh, those in the audience. And maybe you can help us to discover new tools that were not covered in this presentation but you still find them useful in your graduate studies. So if you can do that, uh, would be great in the next couple of minutes, then that will be automatically uh, appear here. Uh, so we will see what is the summary, but for now, if you are okay, I would like you to just spend the next couple of minutes doing this and then we can open the discussion for questions. Aidana, will be that okay? Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, Marhabat says, sorry, I cannot open this website. Um, all right, it doesn't open. Oh, so I tried to use it earlier, just uh, five minutes before the presentation and it worked for me. So, sorry, okay. we should use VPN, no? Oh, um, maybe. So I'm now at the moment using the NU Wi-Fi and seems to, again, okay, yes, I keep reading, seems to be working for some, but not for others. So, okay, another way to, if it doesn't open, I'm really sorry, maybe you need to use VPN, but it doesn't worth it now to run. And, uh, so just write your favorite apps in the chat, perhaps. Uh, so we can use both the this uh, cloud uh, and also in the 
chat and then we can talk about the apps and maybe answer some questions. But I'm seeing some um, seem to be uh, filling in. Okay, there are a few responses. So I'm going to come back maybe for one more minute so we can see. I get in, thank you. Click up my uh, favorite yeah, for tackling multitasking. All right, so I again apologize if you cannot access this website, menti.com, uh, but if you are still interested in participating in the discussion, just add your favorite tools in the chat and then we can talk a little bit about them. All right, for some is loading, not opening. All right, you are having here a summary of uh, these tools. Uh, let's see how many people participated. Uh, eight, well, not many from the audience, but the, I guess that's, uh, that's useful. I see Grammarly, it's uh, number one. Uh, researcher, and Jasp uh, seem to be also popular, uh, paper pile. Uh, really, I mean, really, really good. If you have used other reference manager tools and you were not satisfied, this was my case. Try Paper Pile because it's a great, great tool. All right, there are Loom, Google Scholar, Paper Pile, Trello. Uh, I don't know Trello. Uh, sorry, I can't decide. I like Paper Pile before I use Zotero. Okay, if you use Zotero before, try with uh, Google, uh, excuse me, with uh, Google Docs, but uh, Paper Pile, Canva, Grammarly, and Vivo. Yeah, and Vivo is great, but unfortunately it's a paid software. So any students are lucky because some of them can, act, can have access to it, but they're not for everybody. But uh, yeah, PaperPal is very good tool for interview. Uh, paper for interview, mm, I don't know. Notion, connected papers. Okay, so I will. what I will do is I will just uh, add a new slide with this uh, summary. Uh, hopefully maybe the chat can be made also available but I guess this is pretty much what I had to say. Um, we have only three minutes. I don't know if uh, that's enough, but uh, I just thank you very much for being here. Uh, I hope you have learned uh, maybe at least a couple of new tools that you think you can use in your uh, studies or in your research. And I will stop here. And if you have any question, I will be happy to answer them. So Daniel, thank you very much. Now all the participants can actually ask the question themselves. I've um, unmuted uh, the right so everyone can show up and ask their questions. Please feel free. You have a chance to ask a question now. All right, a lot of thank yous, not many questions. There was actually one question, let me find it. Yeah, if you can help me, Idana, with this, because I was presenting and wasn't able to track the chat uh, very carefully. So, Questions will be during the process when we will start to yeah. open up uh, yeah, this kind of sites for us, then how we can ask. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it is true. I mean, I just run very quickly through these uh, apps just to give you a sense and a feeling of uh, how they look like. But now it's your job really to see if you think they can be useful for you just to give it a try. And as uh, I said, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, there are, of course, great tutorials online, so you might want to try those first. But if you are stuck and you don't know how to use it, always uh, happy to, to help you. Um, Aidana, you said this will be available in YouTube uh, channel of right, uh, on the YouTube of the yeah of our school. Um, there is All one right. question about Google Docs. Yeah. Uh, I get a mask at Google Docs. Voice recording is also available for months. Then will it be deleted from the archive? Yeah, I think that uh, Google Voice uh, is not that uh, free, uh, at least not completely free. So I I have. Honestly, I have not used most of the times I conduct my interviews in English and when, with, and when that's not possible, I normally have a research assistant, but that's the dirty job of translating. But uh, yeah, sometimes as a master student, I remember, uh, apart from knowing what the tools are, you need to be also strategic. So if you know that uh, it's available for a month, you might want to decide to 
compress your data analysis or your transcription into one month and then you will be in everything and then the uh, license will expire uh, but yeah uh, unfortunately not every tool is uh, free they are developed by people and these people they do that uh, normally for commercial purposes uh, of course so this was just a glance of a few that are free for different reasons because they are really free uh, because they are free if you are an NU student, because they are free for the pandemic time, but hopefully you can use them in your studies uh, or in your research. I have to say I use all these tools and uh, I find them useful as well. I use other tools that maybe are not relevant for students that I didn't present here today, but uh, yeah, these are, in my opinion, very useful for students. Thank you. Are there any Thank other you. questions? If we have a question in the future, then how we can do in this case? Yeah, that's surely. And uh, again, I will just write in the chat my email. So it was in the slide, but in case you didn't have a chance to uh, copy it, uh, this is my email. Happy to answer any questions. Um, but again, just give it a try yourself. And when you get stuck, then let me know. How can I help? Okay, then thank you very much for all the participants and thank you very much, Daniel, for this very informative and interesting, as we can see by the number of participants, webinar.